In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, and the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom, both now and ever into the age of ages. Uh, as we just read this, the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 10, we started a new month, uh, thank God, a few days ago, uh, the month, the blessed month of Abib, and last month, the month of Boona, uh, after Pentecost, usually the feast is related, uh, sorry, the, um, the theme of the month is, is related to one of the feasts um, uh, that just was celebrated by the church. Um, <clears throat> so last month, since we just had the, the Feast of the Pentecost before, the theme was the Holy Spirit. And this month, because the Feast of the Apostles is tomorrow, um, the theme is the Apostles <clears throat> and the work of the Apostles and the virtue of the Apostles. Um, <clears throat> and so today we read about the Great Commission what the Lord sends out the apostles um, and gives them direction in their service. Um, and when we actually commemorate the apostles tomorrow, St. Peter and St. Paul and their martyrdom, as well as when we commemorate one of the apostles during the year, usually we read from the same gospel. Um, and as we said before, everything that the Lord Jesus Christ did, he did for us. And not only did he do it for us in the flesh, he did it for us to follow him uh, by the power of the Spirit. <clears throat> so he humbled us that we may glorify him and may humble ourselves that he will lift us up. He took our nature that we remember that we were created according to his image and his likeness. <clears throat> he taught us the way of salvation that we may learn and also teach others um, and preach to others also. He died that we may die to sin. Um, and he rose from the dead that we may rise from sin and taste the resurrection when we leave this body. He also ascended that we may lift our minds to him, and, and he will also on the last day ascend our bodies. He sent to us his Holy Spirit, um, to, the, to the holy apostles and to the church, that we could bring the good news to every land, every nation, and every person. <clears throat> and in the description that he gives to the apostles of today, um, we say, as with Christ, so with the apostles. The power of Christ was manifest in the work and the service of the apostles. And as with the groom, so also with the bride. But what he gave to the apostles, he also gave to the whole church. And as with the apostles, so also in some form with the Christian. Um, <clears throat> so the holy apostles had a great mission to bring the good news to every place and every person. But the work of the Holy Apostles doesn't end with them. Um, it continues. That's why, if, if you recall in the Divine Liturgy, after you read from the Acts of the Holy Apostles, what do we read from? Just read it. The Synaxarian. Why? Because the lives of the saints is a continuation. Um, the Holy Spirit working in the saints is a continuation of the Holy Spirit that was working in the Apostles. Um, and the church is not dead. The church is alive. And the Holy Spirit is, is alive and well and working in us and in the church today. That's why the gates of Hades uh, shall not prevail against it. <clears throat> so this is why we call the church apostolic. Um, not just because it was founded on the apostles, but the spirit and work of the apostles continues until now. <clears throat> and so the Christian has to have the same characteristic and the same mission as the apostles. Maybe to a lesser degree, but actually, as we'll see, St. John Chrysostom says to a great, it should be a greater degree in some sense. <clears throat> um, so they're not only our forefathers and co-founders of the church, but our, our role models, our spiritual role models. And what he asks of them, he asks of us. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, this is a great standard. Um, and even if we read what the Lord says today to them, he says, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Uh, we have, thank God, many more laborers than at the time of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then he says, therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest, send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Be sent, behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Carry neither money bag, knapsack, nor sandals, and greet no one along the road. So, uh, as we said before, part of God's plan um, is for us, at times, to feel incompetent, or to feel outnumbered, or to feel unprepared. Um, 
as a priest, this is very normal for us <laughs> to feel unprepared in the service. Of course, we try to prepare, but it's, it's never enough. Why? Because we depend on ourselves less and on God more. And this should be for the Christian in general. Um, if we're not prepared, that's another story. But if we are trying to work out our salvation in fear and trembling, we still feel the inability to accomplish the work of God without the grace of God. So our prayers should be deepened and increased. Our trust in him, him should also be increased. Um, <clears throat> as St. Uh, Paul also says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as, be, as being from ourselves. All the great work that is happening, it's not from us. Um, he says, but our sufficiency is from God. So the Christian has to feel my sufficiency, my power, my strength, my ability comes from God to trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. <clears throat> because, as St. Paul continues, he made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit, because the spirit gives life. So how can we tell if we are on the right track in serving the Lord um, to some degree as the apostles? <clears throat> well, one of the characteristics is, is kind of strange, but um, as St. Luke mentions in the book of Acts, when uh, St. Paul and St. Silas go to uh, certain cities, <clears throat> they turn the world upside down. Or actually, they didn't describe it this way. It was the people of the city that said, these people came and they turned the wor our world upside down. <clears throat> so when God comes to us, he has to change our world upside down. Um, and this is not a small thing, and it doesn't go unnoticed, um, because God is calling us to work against the norm um, and our norms. Um, one example of this is uh, when we make pancakes, right? Um, it takes quite a bit of skill to get it right, right? But imagine if you only decided to cook it on one side. How would it turn out? <laughs> Disgusting, right? Inedible. Um, one side would be burnt and the other one would be raw. Right, um, the good, the good cook knows when is the perfect time uh, to to flip upside down, and oftentimes the second side is better and looks better than than the first. Right, um, <clears throat> and in a lot of things in our world, some people decide to live their life one side. I'm not going. I'm I'm gonna just stay like like I am, and whatever society says and what the world says the pursuit of success, power, wealth, health, all of that, there's nothing wrong with just this constant. And anything that tries to change the constant is bad, is wrong. But sometimes God wants us to be flipped over. <clears throat> he wants us to be evenly cooked on both sides. He wants to li us to live a balanced life um, between discipline and grace, between wisdom and freedom, between godly sorrow and godly joy. <clears throat> to have active service, but from trust in God. Um, to do your best, but to realize it's never going to be good enough and our sufficiency is from God. To grow in knowledge, but also to grow in a strong faith. Um, <clears throat> sometimes a blind faith. To be wise as serpents, but to be simple and harmless as doves. Um, <clears throat> so in order to be fully cooked, he wants us to feel the, the, uh, the weakness or to feel the shock of being flipped over. <clears throat> and sometimes, um, whether it's in confession or with a spiritual guide, or when we repent, we feel that our life is being flipped upside down. And actually, when we realize it's not being upside down, it's right side up. Um, <clears throat> and so um, when we live a wor too much of a worldly life, our minds are upside down, right? Our thoughts are in the worldly things. Um, but when God comes to us, he said, no, you're upside down. Let me flip you over so that your mind can be up and above the things of the world and reaching to heaven. <clears throat> um, so uh, how, how can we do this? Um, of course, the first thing is just to simply respond to the work of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Um, and the Holy Spirit that is manifest in the church and the successors of the apostles, whether it be the priests or the Christians, the, the true Christians, like we said, the saints 
are the successors of the apostles, because that's why we read the Sanitarium after the, the book of Acts. <clears throat> and St. Paul talks about this in the importance of the servant, the Christian as a servant. Um, in, in Romans 10, he says, How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? This, this applies to all of us. Some, somehow the word of God has to come to us, especially for the new believer. Um, and he says, how shall they preach unless they are sent? So the apostles, one, one of the literal meanings of the apostle is the one who was sent out. And what happens at the end of the lit liturgy? We send you out. <laughs> Why? Because your, the work is not done. The liturgy is the work of the people. And yes, we come to do a certain work that God can work in us, to, to, especially that ends with his holy body, body and blood in, in, uh, inside of us. But that's not the end. The, it's, it's the beginning of the apostolic service that we are responsible for when we leave these doors. Um, <clears throat> and so um, that's one reason why, but we're not perfect, like we said. That's one reason why the Lord sent them out two by two, because if one falls, the other picks them up. If one prays, the other one is working. If one is speaking, the other one is observing and, and acting sometimes. <clears throat> so for this second person with us, could be our father confession, our servants, our close friends, um, the one who is preaching the gospel to us and bringing us the glad tidings. And sometimes we listen, sometimes we speak. So sometimes... Um, uh, well, first of all, we have to have the Lord flip us upside, right side up, and then we do the work. Um, <clears throat> but as the Lord said today, um, he says, sometimes, uh, sometimes when you serve, uh, they will reject you. And if they reject you, just know that they rejected you because they rejected me. And if they reject me, they reject him who said. Um, <clears throat> so Sometimes when we come to serve uh, and, and to, to be encouraged to flip others right side up, there's going to be a polarization. Some will accept, but many will not. And that's okay. Um, in the book of Acts, we read the apostles preaching throughout the ancient world and attempting to flip the minds and the hearts of the people right side up. And in chapter 17, St. Paul and Silas traveled to Thessalonica. Um, and as the custom was, they would start with the Jews in the temple on Sabbath, right? Um, the, the, their home base, usually, um, for many reasons. And, and so they went to Thessalonica, and after three weeks or so, after three Sabbaths, many of the Jews believed, and even more of the non-Jews, the, the Greeks. <clears throat> um, but there was a group that wanted to stay stuck to the path. There was a group that wanted to, that wanted to be burnt on one side, and raw on the other. <clears throat> um, and uh, as, as it says in, the, in chapter 17 again, uh, it says, the Jews who are not persuaded became envious. They took some evil men from the marketplace, not from the church, not from the temple, right? Um, because they, they wanted other people like-minded like them, people who were not close to God. <clears throat> um, and they gathered a mob and they set this whole city in an uproar. Um, and they attacked the house of Jason uh, where the apostles were staying. So notice also that some of the people who caused the problems um, are, are uh, either consumed with envy and pride or they have their own agenda or the ones who are just, this is not their lifestyle. They don't want to be, they're not willing to be uh, flipped right side up. Um, <clears throat> so the solution is to have a readiness. Um, and for us, like we can't uh, dictate that for others. Um, we preach the word and that's it, regardless of the response, but we do our responsibility. Um, but for us, we have to have the willingness, the open mind, and the, the ability or the willingness to do our homework. Um, as uh, in the city of Berea, a couple of verses later, um, it says, St. Luke says, they were fair-minded and they received the word with all readiness and they searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. So are we like the Bereans or are we like the Thessalonians? Not the Thessalonian church like we described, not the ones who believed, but the ones who didn't accept. 
we have to be fair-minded and receive the word with all readiness and search the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. <clears throat> and so, usually, when we do this, we will feel that there is a flip and we're not ready for it. And um, our eyes become uh, more open to the realization that we're doing something wrong, that we're not there yet, um, and that God needs to, to come and to help us to fix a problem um, inside of us. Um, so, uh, also notice there's generally not any lukewarm responses. Either it's hot or cold, like uh, the Lord says in the book of Revelation. So people on fire for the Lord and those who fight against him. Uh, he says, "He who you either gather with me or you scatter. You're either with me or against me. There's no in-between. Um, <clears throat> so like we said, some people responded negatively and some pos positively. Um, and when there is a positive effect, uh, like the Lord says, a little bit of yeast leavens the whole lump. So a little bit of good um, in, in you or in the church or in society can have a very positive and strong and lasting effect if we are faithful. <clears throat> Um, and uh, St. John Chrysostom again talks about this, and he says, as the yeast or the leaven um, can't converts or transforms the large quantity of, of uh, food or meal into its own quality, even so, you shall convert the whole world. <clears throat> and then he says, uh, for great is the power of the gospel, and what is once leavened becomes leaven in turn for the remainder. He said, if 12 men leaven the whole world at that time imagine the extent of our weakness that we cannot so 12 or 70 uh, 72 he said in spite of the numbers um we who ought to be enough for not only one world 10,000 worlds he said and again and this is hundreds uh, hundreds of years ago he's telling his church we should be enough for 10,000 worlds to convert them all if 12 converted the world at that time <clears throat> he says but then you, object, you object and say, but they were apostles. And so he responds and he says, so what? Were they not partakers with you? Were they not raised in cities? Didn't they grow up in the city just like you did? Did they not enjoy the same benefits? Did they not practice trades? Uh, what, were they angels? Of course, no, they were not angels. Did they come down from heaven? No, they were born just like you and me. So here St. John is, Chrysostom is encouraging us to, 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 to not put ourselves down and to put the work and the power of the Holy Spirit in us down. Um, because then we're, we're not going to even try. Um, <clears throat> and even if, it, if, if we're not just only talking about the service outside in the world, but also the, the spiritual growth. Sometimes we put ourselves down spiritually because we think we can't do it. Um, even if we failed a hundred times before, it's okay. Um, <clears throat> St. John Chrysostom again talks about when, at that point um, where... He, he uh, mentions the, the paralytic man. <clears throat> How many years was he paralyzed? Do you remember? 38. 38 years. Good. Um, <clears throat> and he says we should be ashamed because after 38 years, he didn't give up. He um, says even though he was treated in this way, he didn't lose heart. Um, he says we persist earnestly 10 days praying for something, um, and we don't attain it. And if we don't get it after 10 days, we're hesitant to pray and, and, and expend the same amount of effort after that. Um, <clears throat> we don't persevere, he says. Um, but he says, like, we, we can't endure, on the other hand, persevering in the service of our Lord with necessary effort. We have to. We have to try. We have to be persistent, no matter um, what the current result is. And... As the Lord says, there's going to be rejection. It's okay. Um, we just need to be con continue. We need to continue and be persistent. He says, even if um, they reject you, what does he tell them to do? Wipe the dust off your feet. Um, and you're supposed to proclaim peace like lambs among wolves. But if, if they don't respond, what, what did he say? The peace will go. Come back to you. So you're still going to benefit. Even if no one else benefits, you're still going to benefit. So why not? It doesn't matter. 
So the service is not only for the person being served, it's for the servant. Um, <clears throat> and so um, uh, St. Augustine says, our peace will return to us. That means our preaching will profit us, not them, um, not only them. Uh, if the peace we preach rests upon them, it will profit both them and us. Um, <clears throat> so that's why um, we have to continue. And that's why the Lord says, greet no one along the road. Um, St. Ab Ambrose says, no, it doesn't mean we're, we're not supposed to be nice, but we have a mission. It's like, you know, uh, if, if you've ever seen a priest give communion to someone who is sick, right? when they leave the church, you don't talk to anybody, right? Because it's salute no one around, along the road, right? Um, <clears throat> we can't talk until we, we find the person, we pray the prayers, we give them the communion, then you can, you can speak to them. Um, even when the person starts coming and saying, Aguna, I have this, pray for me. Okay, we're going to pray now. I'm not going to talk, <laughs> not gonna talk to you right now. Um, we have a bit more important business to do than to speak. Um, <clears throat> so in our, in our mindset, when we come to serve or when we come to live, we have to have that one track. Regardless of the response, I'm going to do what is right. I'm going to say what is right. I'm gonna, trying to live the right way. Um, and by the grace of God, if he wants to continue the work in that person, then he will. If they reject him, then that's fine. I still have to do my responsibility. <clears throat> May the Lord of all grace give us the spirit of the holy apostles um, so that we flip ourselves right side, up, right side up by the grace of God and work to help um, flipping others uh, right side up. And glory be to him now and forever.